There's more to life than what you see. Every day goes by and you miss a small detail that someone else noticed. That small detail might be an empowering hope. It might be a painting on the wall of a building that you walk by every single day. And it is our perspective that enables us to see this or filters it out. And that's what intrigues me. I'm Gundy and I'd like to talk to you about something quite beautiful and that is perspective. Our realities are subjective to our own perspectives. What do I mean by this? Let me pose a scenario related to one of our greatest sense of perspective, vision, of which I believe is the most impactful in our interpretations of our realities. To begin, you enter a room. As you look around, you recall you're looking for a comb. A comb of which you lost in here. A comb you don't deal with often, but a comb you normally know where it's located. Lately, you haven't been organizing your room like normal. So when you enter the room to the spot your comb normally is, it's a pile of stuff. To the naked eye, a person's perspective of the pile is filtered in their own consciousness. If you are looking for a bright pink comb, you might overlook the other combs if you subconsciously are looking for pink instead of a comb-like object. A person looking for a color might fail to see alternatives, while a person looking for an object will find those substitutions sooner but might not find the original goal of the comb that is pink. When we enter a landscape familiar to us, we subject ourselves to the habits we are used to in those areas. I imagine that you might have a spot for your phone to charge at night in your room, or a spot for your toothbrush, your soap, or other things you use daily. It's likely that your perspective of your home, if you have lived in there for a while, is much more refined than you realize. I imagine that if you have lived there long enough and have been to most parts of the house frequently, you would be able to walk around the house with a blindfold on. Your intuition would drive you to the desired location. You might even do this frequently late at night if you happen to need to go to the bathroom in the dark because maybe you drank a little bit too much water before bed. This intuition is deceptively arrogant. Without vision or senses to update our intuition of an area, we might run into conflicts with moved objects. And even with vision, the untrained eye doesn't see details that are deemed unimportant. Most people don't walk down their hallways noticing the blemishes of the paint on the walls. But most good painters or handymans probably do. On the contrary, most people who enter a new domain, like a room, a new house, or a new store, they survey the area, looking for indications of what they are trying to find. In public, most people are very good at finding these indications. For example, like a bathroom sign, a checkout spot, most of which appear the same at almost every store. A painter doesn't go into a Walmart looking for blemishes on their walls, unless that painter is looking for a new job. So. When should we notice these details, and when should we filter them out? The answer to that is internal. What are my goals? Do I want to improve in some aspect of my life? You can find that by asking yourself, is there more to life than what I see? Are there more opportunities than what I was conditioned to think there is? To practice this, try opening your mind to find new information. You can do this by going on a walk that you've done a thousand times and try your best to notice things that you've never noticed before. Is that walk more beautiful than before? Did you notice something that you have taken for granted before? Or was it more dirty, more annoying than normal? Were there things that you could have cleaned up that you've never noticed? were dirty in the first place. What you notice on your walk will reflect your inner subconsciousness to yourself. When I look for new details, are they uplifting or degrading? Do I see hope in something new, or do I see a degrading walk I've done a thousand times? And the final question you should ask yourself is, what am I going to do about it? Do I want to remain happy all the time seeing only the joy in my life? Am I content or the inverse? Do I always want to be depressed? seeing only the bad things in the world? Do I not enjoy happiness in my life? In the end, make sure you're honest with yourself because lying to yourself only leads to regret, but truth develops you into a person you deep down want to be. Your perspective is everything. It gives joy to your life 
in the darkest times. It enables you to see the light shining through the cracks between the leaves in a dark forest. But it also allows you to see things you need to fix in your life. It enables you to see the blemishes on your wall to make your house a little better. And because of this, we need to be conscious that we have a perspective and that it isn't the only perspective there is. Other people have different perspectives that are just as valuable as ours. And we need to learn to see through those perspectives to develop us into a better person. Thank you for your time. I hope you've learned something today.